Hi everyone, Sam here from The Skin Blog. In this video, I'll be discussing one of our more interesting oils with unique and very rare properties. I'm talking about Kahai Nut Oil, also known as Cardesanenian Corinense Nut Oil. Probably said that wrong, not the best with those sort of words. It's so uncommon, it seems, that there are no photos of them on Canva. So this is leaving me to delve into the internet to find accurate photos, which sadly are far lower quality, which is why they're smaller. Kahai nuts originate from South Africa, specifically Colombia and their rainforests. What makes this interesting is Kahai nuts is from a tree. Personally, I found most of the lighter oils with the dry feel come from smaller plants, while rich oils and butters come from trees. But Kahai oil is different, with its majority fatty acid being omega-6 linoleic acid, known for being unsaturated and fast absorbing. Um, being one of the only two discovered natural sources so far discovered containing naturally created transretinoic acid, specifically tretinoin. Transretinoic acids are versions of retinol that don't need to go through changes within your skin before they can be used, making them more potent. There are also higher risks of the issues normally co coinciding with retinol. Um, so excluding natural ingredients like, such as kahai oil or rosehip oil that, for that matter, there's no way to use tretinoin within your products unless you are a ph pharmaceutical grade company. So kahai oil is yellow to green in color with a shelf life of up to 24 months due to its antioxidant rich content. It also has a slightly l light nutty aroma uh, which won't affect your product's end aroma, while being non-comogenic and absorbing slightly faster than normal. What's interesting is cacao nuts contain between 40 to 60% oil yield, which is likely why it's a high value has a high value reputation with only a moderately expensive price tag, while it could be considerably higher when you think about it, especially where it's come from as well. It has an iodine index of around 140, so it contains a high level of unsaturated fatty acids and less stable fatty acids. Normally, this would mean that its shelf life would be lower, but kahai oil is known for having a rich content of antioxidant properties, which I mentioned, which will extend the shelf life by protecting the carrier oil from oxidation long before it touches your skin. Kahai oil is also heat sensitive, so I wouldn't recommend heating it up, especially as its unique compounds will be affected and degrade via that heat. And to saponify it, you'll need 150 grams of potassium hydroxide per liter. But unless you're creating luxury soaps, I doubt you use kahai oil for them. Its fatty acid profile consists of omega-6 linoleic acid up to 58%, omega-9 oleic acid up to 25%, and omega-7 palmitic acid up to 20%. Kahai oil's fatty acid profile has a nice blend of different fatty acids that revolve around strengthening your skin barrier and providing your skin with rich anti-inflammatory properties. The omega-7 palmitic acid specifically provides a rich content of emollient properties while improving the spreadability of the oil itself. Sadly, there aren't many papers out there discussing the molecular compounds within kahai oil, so we must read between the lines of what can legally be stated and not. There are some references, for instance, of people saying that kahai oil contains squalene, but I haven't found any of them credible, and until we can get a paper that talks about that content, we have to go with the fact that there isn't any in there. What we do know for a fact is that kahai oil contains 1.071 milligrams of tretinoin per litre, much, much lower than what most people state is within rosehip and kahai oil as its retinal content. While it might be a, um, what's it called? A transretinoic acid, apologies, forgot that for a second. The concentration is so low that it, you, literally it doesn't sound significant at, at all. But when we compare the one milligram per liter to the best quality of retinol possibly used within the cosmetic industry, retinildehyde, which is most commonly used at 15 milligrams in a 30 mil product or 0.05% concentration, when that's compared to 30 mil of kahai oil, which only then contains 0.0322 milligrams in a 30 mil bottle of kahai oil, that's 467 times less still that doesn't sound like much at all, does it? But that doesn't account for the different benefits between tretinoin and retinildehyde. One paper that will be found in the description below shows that testing on the epidermis with equal amounts of retinildehyde and tretinoin 
that tretinoin improved transretinoic acid concentrations within your skin by 2,500% more than retinildehyde. When you account for this, the tretinoin content within pure cahai oil provides 5% of the benefits of retinildehyde without any use of chemicals or risk of redness, sensitivity, or damaged skin. What cahai oil will do for you with its tretinoin content is stimulate collagen synthesis, reduce pigmentation, scar tissue, blemishes, dark spots, and acne. Now there's a, a reference to cahai oil also being extremely rich in vitamin E tocopherols, 50% more in fact than argan oil. And there's not many papers delving into this, I'm do seeing it has around 1,350 milligrams of tocopherols, although don't quote me on that. It would explain cahai oil's longer shelf life as well as the fact it doesn't have an ex excessive amounts of stable fatty acids. The tocopherols will provide antioxidant benefits alongside strengthening your cellular membranes and, of course, preventing lipid peroxidation. Cosmetically, I would use cahai oil within facial creams, oils, gels, etc. It's quite affordable for a high-end ingredient with Makes Ingredients selling wild harvested cahai oil for £113.46 per litre. And in the US, you can get it from Bulk Naturals, who sell it for $132.25 per litre. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a comment below and subscribe if you haven't already. See you soon.